Hello, 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 everybody in the interwebs. Welcome to another session of Habitat Office Hours. I am your host, Kaya Devrel here at Progress Chef, and I am here with the Habitat team. Um, we've got Raul and Matt, who you know. We've also got a new face on today, Johnny. Johnny is actually uh, principal engineer on the Habitat team who, who primarily focuses on the supervisor side. Um, we're gonna kind of get a little bit of background from him um, in a moment. First, we are going to go into our pre-fight checks. Uh, it's been a while since we talked to you guys, so we've got to remind you um, to number one, Follow us on Twitter because if you are not following us on Twitter, what are you doing? We are at Chef on Twitter. Very easy to remember. You're going to get planned out of just there. You'll know, you'll learn when blog posts go live. You'll know when we go live here. Um, like for office hour sessions and um, open sessions and also informational sessions. And you'll get other things like when we update our docs and all those types of things, all our social stuff follow us at Chef. And if you're not on our community Slack, you should be. Um, if you're a practitioner, if you want to learn how to use Chef, if you want to interact with smart folks that do know how to use Chef, get on our community Slack. We answer questions. We also do like a community meeting every week on Thursday at 12 uh, at noon Eastern time. Um, we also have um, release announcements that go on Slack, and you get to interact with a bunch of cool people. Like our community rocks. You should be a part of it. This course, this course is kind of like our version of Stack Overflow. You can put your long form questions, like an engineer will answer, um, or if I run across it, I'll tag an engineer to get an answer. And um, we'll basically interact that way. That's generally for if you are in like a time zone that most people aren't on our Slack channel um, and active during that time. Go to Discord, you'll still you'll get an answer um, fairly quickly. And don't forget about our docs. Every time we have a release, we update our docs. Go check there first for answers to your questions. And um, if you don't get answers there, head on over to Community Slack. Uh, we'll actually have live people answering. All right, so. Today, we are talking about native packages. Um, oh, actually, first, let's, let's, talk to, let's talk to Johnny. Johnny, give us some, give us some background about yourself. Let us know about like who you are and, and, and when you joined us and all of that. Sure, sure. So uh, it's really good to be here. Uh, I have been with the Habitat team since uh, January this year. And prior to Habitat, uh, I spent probably around eight years running my own startup. So I had founded a company called Playlife and we were into the gamification space. So we had two products. One was a developer platform for building gamified systems where you could design your systems, then you could integrate it with an API into third party web applications, uh, build leaderboards, point systems, things like that. Um, and then we had another product, uh, which was essentially around sales performance management. So we would integrate with things like Salesforce and uh, Zoho, and we would put real-time leaderboards on TV screens where people could, you know, see points and compete in different competitions based on uh, their CRM activity, like when they close sales, when they make calls, so on and so forth, right? Uh, so I did that for about eight years. Uh, we were a small bootstrap team. Uh, and then from that, we, we decided to eventually shut down because, well, there were a lot of people who made a lot more money than us and who had a lot more money from funding and investors. So we kind of called it quits. Uh, and I moved on to another company called Freight Tiger, which was in a very different space. It was in the logistics space. And over there, I spent a lot of time uh, wrestling with microservices and building their uh, so they had a real-time tracking platform where they would track truck drivers through cell phones and GPS devices and apps. So uh, essentially, I was working on that entire platform, uh, architecting and building that. And that's where I kind of got into Rust. So uh, 
I did an entire redesign of that platform and we did a rewrite of it. We moved it to uh, Rust and that's how I kind of got interested in that. And uh, I was always quite keen to work on something open source. Uh, worked on a bunch of smaller things in the past uh, sure. and Habitat kind of came along and uh, it it was the right time to move. So that's, that's kind of how I wound up here. <laughs> nice. So, so, so basically, good. right. So you were like, because I was, I remember we were talking about adding folks to the team, to the Habitat team a while back. I was like, where are you going to find Rust developers? And and here you go, Ronnie. <laughs> Johnny, like, this is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. But welcome to the team. It, it, was it was really cool because, uh, like, I think open source projects themselves are very hard to work on. Like, I mean, or at least they're rare to come by. Most companies don't have projects that are open source to work on. And, and then being Rust is a double whammy over there. <laughs> and, right. And, it was for me. It was like something that was, yeah. It was actually hard for me to find other places with, <laughs> with Rust. There weren't there weren't a lot of places that had uh, good opportunities in Rust. So there you so, go. So match made in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So let's talk about native packages. I mean, okay. So we all know about core packages. Like, let's tell me what's the difference as a person who is like kind of just getting into Habitat. Tell me what, like, what are native packages? Cool. Um, so. Essentially, I'll start from the concept of the standard. So I'm referring to them as standard packages. Today, they're just called packages, habitat packages. But we're making this differentiation of native and standard. So a standard package essentially uh, is, is built using habitat. And it gets built in a clean room environment where it has basically nothing else other than what you pull into that environment. right? So it's got no operating system. It's like completely blank slate. And you need to literally pull in every single piece of dependency that you need into that environment. It has to be either a dependency of your dependency or your direct dependency to actually come into that environment. And only then can you use that dependency to build. So for example, like if you wanted to build a node app, you'd need node and node would need uh, glibc and that would need GCC and so on and so forth, right? Like you'd have this whole chain of dependencies that need to get pulled in to build your node application, right? And that essentially uh, is what a standard package is and uh, how it how it works. Like it basically builds in these packaged isolated components and you only have exactly what you need and you build exactly what you want, right? Uh, the idea with native packages is a little different and uh, there are a few reasons why we are doing it. I'll go into the reasons after I kind of describe uh, what native packages does and how it's different from a standard package. Mm -hmm. So in a native package, you don't build in a clean room environment, right? You build on your host system itself. So you might be wondering, like, why would you do that? Right? Uh, because uh, a lot of the benefit of Habitat comes from building in the clean room environment and pulling in those specific dependencies because you can reproduce your build, right? Uh, so what we do in a native package build is that we uh, just use whatever is available on your host system and you can... Uh, build pretty much on, uh, you know, through any kind of script or tool or anything available. You could use Make, you could use Node, you could use whatever is there on your system and you could make a build, right? right. Uh, and once we build this native package, uh, you would then have it. So building the native package would build these things and put it into a hard file. And once you've done that, you can take this hard file and you can run this uh, on a supervisor. And uh, you can have, you know, service updates, reconfigurations, you get all of the service management aspects of supervisor available to your application, right? Uh, so the main reason you would do a native package build like this is essentially is today it's for architectures where we don't yet have uh, standard packages, right? So namely, uh, what we're currently targeting as a first step is the Linux ARM uh, platform. So where you can have a service that is compiled with say node.js on an linux arm machine and you get a hard file and you can take and run that on an arm based supervisor and just have it would just work right, right. Um, the second reason so so when you do this with native packages one thing is that uh, your run you need to ensure that your runtime environment has the dependencies right so once you package your node app uh, while you need node at build time also, you will also need node at runtime to actually run your node app, right? And you need to take care of that dependency, right? 
Uh, so right now, one 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 use case is the stopgap measure where you can still use the supervisor, you can still run services uh, through this mechanism on platforms where we don't yet have standard packages. Uh, the second longer term use case for this that we're looking at essentially is uh, to actually bootstrap a set of standard packages, right? So for example, uh, suppose you wanted to build GCC for ARM, right? Uh, now GCC uh, and most compilers like GCC essentially use or are compiled by themselves, right? Uh, so you compile C with C, you compile Go with Go, <laughs> you compile Rust with Rust. <laughs> Uh, so what happens is if you, if you wanted to build a GCC package, uh, you'd need a GCC package, right? And that's something, uh, that you can't. So if you're, if you're starting and if you need to build a GCC for ARM, you can't do it today. Like it's, it's at least not natively possible, like natively possible. So the way we used to do it in Habitat uh, or the way we did it in Habitat the first time essentially is you would build, uh, you'd have say an we did it for x86 and windows so x86 linux and windows so what what we would do essentially is we'd have these binaries that we built and uh it was built through some other mechanism and it was essentially put into a zip file and what would happen is we'd run it in a specific kind of a studio which would just download these binaries and then it has like once it's downloaded the binaries it has a gcc with which it can build another gcc like an isolated gcc right so this was a bit of magic that we used to do, uh, which was done like a long time ago, and I think never repeated again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but essentially, uh, native packages will be a way of kind of standardizing that approach, where we say, OK, if you want to say now build a set of packages for the ARM Linux or for M1 or for any, any other architecture, right? what you would probably do as a first step is build like a native GCC package which is just using whatever's available on your ARM system or your M1 system or whatever it is, you build a GCC. And then when you want to build an isolated HAP GCC, that, that takes this GCC native as a dependency. And then it compiles like an isolated GCC, right? Uh, okay. So that's the second use case. So these are the two main kind of uh, scenarios uh, that we are trying to address. One is a long-term scenario and one's kind of a short-term solution. Um, right, but that's... That's a gist of uh, native packages. Okay, so we're like we're getting like that piece out of like a, the black box, if you will. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. okay, yeah. that worked. Magic, I guess, uh, that a lot of people didn't understand or maybe even know about. Like, if, I'm not even sure a lot of people would thought about. How did you, how did you make that GCC package? Go ahead. Yeah, well, I was gonna say the, the other thing that I, I would just point out is that like just in general with Habitat, what we're trying to do um, is put a little bit more focus on decoupling some of the services of Habitat. So right now, like Habitat covers a, a very wide surface area. You've got, um, you know, the building of packages, the storing of packages, you know, in our whole, you know, builder infrastructure, uh, you've got the supervisor, you've got um, and all sorts of stuff with the supervisor in terms of gossip and service discovery. So there's all these like different services that actually that, that take up a lot of both kind of intellectual space, you know, for you to, to think about and also just code space. Um, and mm -hmm. it's all kind of entangled together. And so we're trying to kind of like maybe you don't want service discovery um, and uh, or maybe you don't, you know, it, you know, could we could we provide you with you know a supervisor environment that maybe doesn't have you know kind of all this extra stuff um involved or a way of kind of like adding that stuff stuff on um a little bit more e easily and, and uh kind of consuming habitat in a more of an a la carte manner you know a lot of that you know we're still thinking about there's no like you know master plan you know that right. that uh, uh but but just like we're just kind of trying to keep that in the back of our minds as we design things you know and it's just so you know here like with native packages it does work very well and play into um the, our multi-platform or you know our are spanning out to, to arm very well but also mm -hmm. like how can we take that in such a way so that like maybe people don't want to like have this whole build system and, right. and and subscribe to an entire like 
you know, essentially a Linux distribution of packages. You know, maybe they just want an easy way to like build a package on a new platform. Um, this would be a, a way for them to, to, to do that. Nice. Just like, you know, kind of going down like the ease of use um, mm -hmm. and like kind of making, making it, making habitat more. a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. A little bit more digestible. There we go. I like that. I like yeah. that. Raul, do you have something to add? I know you started to speak. Oh, no. I, I was like um, super excited with that uh, conversation and that uh, description, right? So I was thinking, okay, let's, let's look at the demo, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> Let me just share my screen. Okay. You almost got off the hook there, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I have uh, opened over here VS Code and I have one of our sample node app repos. It's got a simple Node.js app in it uh, with a simple index file, starts a server, serves a few uh, basic template files. And we have a habitat folder in here. And within this habitat folder, we have a plan file. And if you look at it, it looks more or less very similar to a regular plan file. Uh, there are a few things that are different here, which I will point out. So one thing is obviously the name. So this this was actually the same sample node app that you may or may not have seen before. It was a sample node application example for Habitat. So I've just named it differently because uh, when you build a native, when you build a plan natively, like it essentially creates a whole new package, right? So you if if you're having say a native and a non-native version of a package. I'm not sure if you'll have a use case like that, but if you have a use case like that, uh, be sure to name them differently because they will essentially get built as different packages, right? Uh, Johnny, the other, yeah. I hate to in interrupt you, but could you make your screen as a little bit bigger? Like, can you oh, sure. a bad bit? Is that better? One more time. Okay, this is... Yep, perfect. Cool. Um, so essentially, um, the plan file looks pretty much the same, but one thing that's, uh, suspiciously missing over here, uh, is the dependencies. So if you see the build step, it does an NPM install and the do install does, uh, it, it does, it copies all of the, uh, files into the package folder, right? But essentially there is no dependencies here, right? There's no, uh, Mainly, there's no node as a dependency here. Um, so the idea here is that whatever dependencies you need to execute this build function and this install function, this we assume is present on whichever system you're going to run this on, right? And it's just going to use whatever is there, right? Uh, so a cool side effect of this is also that uh, the hooks that you have for your package, right? So in this case, we have two hooks for this package. One is a run hook. Uh, which is a simple shell script. And I've also put in just for variety, a uh, health check hook, which is actually a Node.js script, right? Uh, it's not um, it's not a shell script. So because again, uh, of the fact that the native package uh, does not manage its dependencies and like Habitat doesn't manage the dependencies, it's basically going to look for this node on the runtime environment, right? And if it finds a node in the runtime environment, it will just use that node and it'll execute this health check hook. Right. Okay. So that's something cool uh, that you can do with native packages as a side effect. And I'll now get into how you would actually build this native package. So it's not very different from a regular package build. So you'd basically do had have package build. And we have a new flag, which is dash n, which stands for native. Uh, and you basically give the uh, context folder, right? So which I'm already inside the sample node app. So this is my current folder. So I'm going to do a build and let me just give sudo. And as you can see here now, it's started doing the build. You'll see a specific output for a native package build saying building native package. And yeah, it's, it did an NPM install. It copied the files, uh, generated the artifact, and there you go. 
right? So it's copied everything into it. And we now have, if you see in my folder on the left side here, we have the hard file, right? Okay. And how you would run this is also fairly simple. So, so I'm just using, so I'm basically doing, I'll explain this command. So it's first uh, sourcing the results last build environment. So this is just a file that gets written out whenever you do a hab package build. Uh, it just gives the details of the last uh, build that ran. What package did you build? What was the hard file? Things like that, right? So I just use that because this name is quite long and <laughs> hard to type out. So I just source in that environment file and then I just do a regular uh, sudo hab soup run. Uh, and I have given that hard file as my input, right? So dot results slash dollar package artifact, which will result to this particular file over here. And once I do that, you can see uh, supervisor starts up and the node app starts up. So you can see starting service and you can see the health check hook here, which is this file that I showed you a while earlier, right? So it's basically executing a Node.js script here as the health check hook. Awesome. And uh, and that's it. So this, this particular node app is actually running on, uh, this is actually running on an ARM-based system. So you can see here it's an R64 GNU Linux ARM-based platform, right? So this is uh, essentially uh, how you would how you would package your application and run it on uh, on ARM, right? Awesome. As a native package. That that's pretty straightforward. That's pretty straightforward. Thank you for that demo. Um, a community, anybody, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or you can um, ask a question in the community Slack and the Habitat channel. I will definitely be going around and um, collecting questions as we go along and I'll, I'll ask them towards the end. Thank you, Johnny, for that demo. That was great. Um, we do have a couple of, well, actually we have um, some builder or Habitat and builder release updates. Who wants to take that one on? Um, yeah, we can go, go over that. And then I think we can go over the community questions, right? Uh, yep. Uh, yeah, so there's not much there, but I think uh, just uh, just wanted to you know, share with the group and with everybody that, uh, We'll be having. Uh, we already had a builder release last uh, month, and we uh, have uh, linked that in in our discourse. We are also going to plan habitat and builder releases uh, for the work which we are doing and the work which we are sharing in this group right uh, pretty soon. So please watch for those updates in the community Slack, and uh, uh, if you have any suggestions or any feedback, please share with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Raul. Let's get into our community question for the day. This comes from Discourse. Um, so our Discourse community member asks, is there a way to, to clean up the automate have directory from packages of old versions? Here's an example of an old uh, version. There are many directories with content of other obsolete versions as well. And I'd like to clean up to clean that up to free some space. Is there a way to do that? Matt, do you have an answer? Yeah. Um, so there is a hab package uninstall command, um, and that will uninstall um, not only the package that you tell it to uninstall, but it will also uninstall any dependencies that that package have, has that aren't being used by other packages. So you know, if there's shared dependencies, it won't remove those. But if there's any packages that are being, you know, that are, they have, if that package has dependencies that are exclusive to that package, uh, it'll remove that um, as well. You could, it has a dry run argument. So like if you were nervous, <laughs> uh, you can run it with a dry run and see exactly what it would uh, delete. Um, I, I would put in the, add the caveat here. So like we are the Habitat team. We are not the Automate team. Um, and, um, I would, you know, just double check with your customer service representative, cause I don't want to speak for, you know, automate packages, but 
the, you know, the fact of the matter is if auto, you know, automate or any application is updating itself, um, and especially if these are particularly old, up to, like looks like this is 2019, like that seems pretty safe to, to get rid of if you're confident you're not using it. Um, another thing just to, I'm going to put out there just to be aware of that may not help in this specific case because this is automate, but just for, because um, an automate wraps up the starting of the supervisor and all that. So you don't really have access to this. But if you're coming into this from a 100%, you know, pure habitat standpoint, when you start up the habitat supervisor, there are arguments that you can pass to it so that, you know, as it updates services, it will clean up after the old services. Um, and it can, you can, you know, pass in and tell it like, maybe you want to keep the most, like, let's say the two most recent versions of that service. You know, it, it, it has ways to, um, to be, you know, very specific about, you know, how much you want to keep and how much you don't want to keep. What I would do is I would just do a hab sup, um, you know, hab sup uh, run dash dash help. Um, and that will point you kind of in the direction of what those arguments are. But that way, if, if you're running Habitat um, you know, on an ongoing basis, especially if you're doing lots of updates, you absolutely don't want to like, you know, fill up your disk or do anything like that. Um, and that's a good way to, to just kind of without having to think about it, just have the supervisor clean up things for you. Again, that's not necessarily, I don't believe that's applicable in an automate um scenario but but for this automate this specific automate question have package um uninstall should do the trick for you um so i hope that's helpful awesome thank you for um for that answer that was very thorough um hopefully that answered your question uh discourse community member if not feel free to leave a comment in either the chat or hit us up on uh, community Slack, and we'll, you know, uh, either get deeper and and or bring in somebody from Automate to help answer that question for you as well. Um, before we wrap it up, this has been like a great office hour session. Uh, I want to plug shamelessly um, ChefCon. It's coming up, uh, and if you are not registered, you should be. Specifically for the community, we have like prepared and curated some great events. Um, we're calling it Chef Conf After Dark. It's Chef Conf for the people. Um, we're going to be doing open spaces in the actual conference itself. So it's going to be like unstructured, um, like community huddles, if you will. Somebody will put a, a a topic on a whiteboard and we'll talk about it. Um, and if you want to be a part of that conversation, you, you can be a part of that conversation and we can have multiple different huddles. That's that's going to be awesome. We're going to have our engineering team there um, and some of our leadership team there so that you can ask questions and like really get into the meat and potatoes with the folks that you really want to talk to. We're also going to do board games and brews. And um, finally, we're going to have a Chef and Teller at Community Meet and Greet. So that's going to be pretty awesome. And you need to be there. I actually have, have like, you can only be there, actually. So you have to register for, like, our in-person ticket. We, we have virtual tickets, and we have a lot of people registered for virtual but if you want to be at Chef Couple, you got to be in person. Got to be with us in Boston. So with that said, do you guys have anything else to add? Nope. Nope. All right. I don't see any additional um, questions in the chat or in community Slack. But uh, as everybody knows, and it'll be on Twitch, so if you go back and watch and you have some questions, feel free to put them, like I said, in the chat or um, add them in Community Slack. And we're good to go. Oh, looks like we lost Johnny. <laughs> Who's that? Yeah, nice. Well, thank you all for joining. Uh, this has been a great session. And until next month, awesome thank you thank, thank you, you. <laughs> all, all right. right bye guys bye, bye.